So we went to all that effort of of overloading the plus equals operator so that this line of code would execute. And I think we're good. Let me just set sandbox game up as our startup project. Run this again, and we can see. Yep, seems to be working fine. And just because I'm I've been bit more than once, I'm actually going to clean the entire solution and rebuild it just to ensure that it is actually building this this compilation unit and using our new code instead of what we did before. And here we go. Yep, same thing. Looking good. Okay. Good. Well, my next goal, and this is kind of the fun part. I, I, I think it's the fun part. I want to make this the ship turn. Alright, when I push right, instead of having it move right, I want it to turn right. And when I push forward, then I want it to go forward. For example, say I turn this ship so it's it's uh well it's still moving on the screen, but say I turn the ship so it's like that, and then I told it to move forward, then you can think of that as having thrust or fire come out of the back end of it here, and then that would hopefully the result of that would be to move our ship that way. And that's that's my next goal here is to get our ship to do that. Um as much fun as as it is, which it is, it's a lot better than what we had before. I wanna make our ship rotate. Well, it's time for matrices. Don't be scared. Matrices are easy. They're not as scary as... If you want to go watch The Matrix, go ahead. I remember when I was watching The Matrix, I was a young computer scientist, freshly married, and we were watching The Matrix, and my wife turned and looked at me about halfway through and said, do you understand all those numbers that are going down the screen? And I looked at her, and I got this look on my face like, yeah, what do you think? Of course I do. I'm I'm Mr. Mathematics, and I had I have no idea. I think those numbers are a bunch of rubbish. It's it's all sci-fi movie stuff, but but whatever. <laughs> it made for a good moment early in my marriage. We're gonna use matrices, and we're gonna start out real simple. I just want to rotate this triangle. Uh, let me refer you though to a Khan Academy video. Let me close this off. Close this. I have the video I wish to reference right here. This is Khan Academy. Again, I hope you're using this a lot. He's he's a much, much better uh, lecturer than I am, but um, his uh, math here, it's it, it just like a simplistic way of explaining things. So I notice about seven minutes into the video is where uh, he starts going through the things that you need to know. But uh, what I for what we're about to do, but what I suggest is just watching the vid video from the beginning to the end. Um, but he talks about how rotation matrices. How we can make a rotation matrix, and he goes through the whole process of creating that. I am going to assume you have watched this video and understand. Maybe you did some of the problems or whatever they have to to help you understand. It's not that difficult, and I'll refer to this as we go along here through what we're about to do. So pause my video, go Google linear transformation examples rotation in R2 on KhanAcademy.org, watch this video, and and then hit unpause and let's continue. Uh, well, first things first, we need a matrix class. In order to do a rotation, we need a matrix class. So let's go to our engine here, and in math, that seems like an appropriate place. Add a new item, and we'll do a header file. I'm going to call it matrix. Consistent with our vector, we're going to call it matrix 2D. Uh, so on and so forth. Pound, if, pound, if not defined, engine matrix 2D H. Control L, Control V, V, pound define, Control End, pound end if. Struct matrix 2D, and I believe we had namespaces last time I checked. Yep, namespace math. Let's do that. Namespace math curly, curly, Control L, Control Enter, Control A, Control K, F to format. Alright, matrix 2D. Now, a matrix, if you notice, it's a two-dimensional matrix, so we need to store four floats. There's a few ways we could do that. We could say float members and four like that, or we can do float. Uh, how do we want to? We need an intuitive naming scheme here, because what I want to create essentially is a matrix with four members and and call this x, y, z, w, but then we use those variables for other things, so I don't want to use x, y, z, w. In fact, I, what does y mean? Is that the row or the column? Or, I don't know. So let's just do 
So I think what we'll do, uh, for now at least, to change this a little bit later, but let's say this is row 1, column 1, row 2, column 2, row 1, column 2, row 2, column 2. But we're computer scientists, and so I'm actually going to say this is row 0, column 0, row uh, 0, uh, column 1. Right? We're going to be 0 based, right? So column 1, and let me just start over with these ones here. So this is going to be row 1, column 0, row 1, column 1. All right, so we'll do that for now. We're going to change this up a little bit later as we get more mathematical. But again, let's start basic and move on from there. So R0, C0, float R0, C1, float R1, C0, float R1, C1. Now to C++, this is identical to us saying float members sub uh, four, an array of four floats here. Okay, this creates four floats as well, but but now we're being explicit and naming them directly. Now, I actually haven't done this test myself, but I sat in a ray tracing course one time where they were profiling these, and, and it was interesting because one student had implemented uh, their matrix kind of like this, where they had four, and then another student had explicitly named them, and it turned out that explicitly name them ran significantly faster than just indexing the array, uh, having to do the offsets into the array every time you want to access a member. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but I'm not a premature optimization junkie quite yet. Uh, I, the main reason I'm going off these variable names is so we have intuitive names for the positions in the arrays, but I am going to change this up a little bit later uh, to do some more mathematical definitions, but I want to grow up to that point and if we have our unit tests in place we can do that uh, so on and so forth so we have our matrix class and it's gonna need a constructor let's just think quickly think through quickly what we want to do here let's do uh, matrix 2d and the constructor is going to initialize all these members I think we're done with this diagram for now so let's let's copy this Paste this. This is going to get a little messy, but we'll clean this up. Put those there. Put this here. And bring this over here. And bring this up here. And we'll just declare the constructor here. We'll do the INL file like we did with the uh, vector class. We have this constructor here. I want to add some default uh, values, though. We're going to do, if you just create a a matrix, you automatically get the identity matrix. Actually, this needs to be a zero, uh, which is a nice default behavior that we'll rely on. I'm going to bring these down, just format them a little bit. So this will, I'm also going to say explicit here. I think I did that on the vector class and told you why we did that. Yeah, because we don't want any implicit conversions from floats to matrix. So I'm going to put explicit there. Uh, define the uh, pr default parameters. We'll initialize them in the INL file. And then, most importantly, I want to be able... The whole reason we're going to create this matrix class is so that we can multiply our matrix to a vector and rotate our ship. Again, refer to the Khan Academy video um, on matrix multiplication and vectors and, and matrix transformations. Let me go find those for you, the specific ones I would recommend. So I found here Khan's linear transformation uh, list. He's got vector transformation. I, I would I would start here on this this playlist here. Functions and, and linear transformations. Start here and work your way down, roughly to. I'd probably stop here at linear transformations and matrix vector products. Watch that one. Watch all the ones before it. Get a feel for what's going on here. Work some examples on paper. Take and it, and it may take you a day or two to get up to this point, but I don't. I, I'm not going to re, try to reproduce what Khan's done. He's done a very mathy way of doing it. I'm a programmer, a game programmer. I want to do it a game programming way, and and so if you can get down these concepts of math, and now I'm I'm going to enhance that understanding, and 
help you understand it in terms of game programming. So anyway, watch those videos and get familiar before moving on here. But we need to add a declaration to our uh, matrix class for the operator to multiply a matrix times a vector. So let's do that. Let's, a matrix times a vector will return another vector. So vector vector 2D and notice we don't get the vector 2D help here, the intelligence help, because we didn't pound include vector 2D. So pound include vector, what do we call it? It was math, oops, sorry, math <laughs> What's wrong here? Pound include. Yeah, that's right. Math slash vector 2D. I'm always, yeah, sometimes IntelliSense has issues, and sometimes there's actually a real issue. So let me comment this out and build and see what the compiler says about it. Build succeeded. Okay, well, I just, I guess IntelliSense is having personal issues. One way to fix this is. Well, there's a couple ways. One, I'm going to close Visual Studio and restart it and see what happens. That generally fixes this issue. Yet, uh, okay, so I just restart Visual Studio. Same problem. So let's actually try to use Vector 2D. Uh, the the compile or the preprocessor would have complained if it couldn't. Oh, <laughs> I know why we didn't get an error. <laughs> Again, here's the here's the difference between compilation units versus header files. The compiler right now, the compiler's not compiling this header file. Compilers compile compi co compilation units or compilation units, whichever way you want to say it. The compiler compiles compilation units or CPP files. Header files are simply convenience files for us to pound include or copy and paste a bunch of code all around without having to literally copy and paste it and modify it all over the place whenever we need to modify it. So that's why we have header files. Go look at the C++ playlist on header files and and you'll see that. So we're not actually compiling this header file. Uh, nothing's happening with it. We actually have to pound include this header file into a compilation unit before the compiler will pick up and, and identify whether there's a further issue or not. So let's do that. I'm going to control alt l and a good place to probably include our header file would be in our test project. So remember we have vector 2D tests. I'm going to add a compilation unit CPP file, and let's call it matrix 2D tests. Uh, dot CPP. Okay, enter, and we get it. Now I can pound include math slash matrix 2D dot H. Notice the intelligence works fine there, but we're in a different project here. This is engine tester, and maybe we have our paths set up correctly, incorrectly for engine. So now that I've just literally copied or pound included this matrix 2D dot h file into a cpp file that's that causes the preprocessor to copy all this code and paste it right here and now i'm going to tell the compiler hey compile that code so let's see what happens i'm going to check our configuration though build configuration manager just make sure everything's checked uh, set to be built control shift b let's see if the compiler complains at all nope the compiler doesn't complain so at that point i'm going to say intellisense is having issues not my problem um, this is definitely an IntelliSense uh, error, this one down here, this red squiggly. PCH warning, header stop, cannot be in macro pound if block. It's, just ignore this. This is IntelliSense um, having a bad day. Uh, one other fix I can try to use to fix this IntelliSense problem is I can close Visual Studio. I can bring up my folder with my project in it. And notice we have this SDF file, which is a SQL Server um, database file. It's, it's quite large, 46 megs. And notice I don't check it into my repository. I think it's useless to have it in the repository. But IntelliSense builds this file. What it does is parses all the header files and basically everything it could find and stores all that information in this SDF file. And so when we're typing along and we hit control space or IntelliSense needs to give us, give us some help, um, IntelliSense can do immediate lookup in these database tables, which is much faster than IntelliSense trying to parse our files, continuously trying to find what it is we're trying to use. So it's an optimization trick. Um, one way to sometimes, not always, but sometimes fix IntelliSense problems is to take this file and just delete it, send it to the recycle bin, sure. Uh, let's reopen the solution, and you'll notice Visual Studio says loading, loading, 
And quickly it says, parsing, parsing, parsing. I don't have an SDF file. I need to parse, I need to parse, I need to parse. I need to figure out what's there. Notice this 142 is going to grow quickly to 64 because this is IntelliSense parses the include files, which include other files, which include other files, which include other files, which include other files. It's doing a recursive parse, trying to find all possibilities of code, so on and so forth. So if I bring up our folder again, you'll notice the SDF file is back. It's smaller, but it will quickly grow as we do more and more programming. Notice the red squiggly's there still. Thank you, IntelliSense. I forced you to rebuild this file, but whatever. The compiler's happy. Um, actually, if I want to be dead sure, if I want to be dead sure, I remember we pound included our matrix 2DH into this project, which has different additional include directories. If you remember, we right-click here and go to Properties. And we go C, C++, General, Additional, Include Directories. This project has different ones than our engine project. And this IntelliSense, the error is basing its information off the engine project. Yeah, it builds fine over in this project because we set up that math slash vector 2D dot H is there because we added that to our additional include path. If I go to Properties here, additional include directories. Remember, one of the ones we added was to our engine directory. And engine just so happens to have a folder called math. And in there we have placed the vector 2d.h file. If I want to be absolutely sure that, or, or just double check this, I need to pound include this header file into a compilation unit inside of engine, not over here. Well, remember this temp CPP I made like in the third video or second video? It's it's, a, it's literally just a compilation unit we should have thrown away a long time ago. I'm not even committing it to SVN. But uh, in here, this compilation unit, I believe, is the only compilation unit being built in Engine. Actually, no, I'm wrong. Clock.cpp. Remember, we added that one as well. But here in tempcpp, let's just do some testing here. Pound include math. May oh, now IntelliSense is finding it. Whatever. IntelliSense can be frustrating sometimes. Control-Shift-B. Build. Hey, it's still built. So engine project's happy. The tester project's happy. Just to be super sure, I can clean the solution, make the compiler start out from the beginning. But now our build time is going to take longer because it has to start fresh. The OBJ files are now gone. If you don't know what an OBJ file is, go check out the C++ playlist. Yeah, but build succeeded. So I think we're good. I'm going to go here. I'm actually going to delete temp CPP. Remember... Uh, we didn't check this in, so I'm just going to click delete. It's gone. We no longer need it. Uh, the test file is good. We've got this. We need to uh, to find some operators, but this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to... We've covered a lot of ground in this video. I'm going to stop this video and continue on in the next video.